Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So this problem example also is a cantilever beam as you can see but here the loading is slightly different so here you see the beam let's just you know follow the beam and try to understand the loads so here the beam goes from a to b a is the free end over here and b is the one that is clamped here you have a uniformly distributed load and at this point d you have a kind of a projection now because of this projection what you're having here you're applying a load of 10 kilo pounds 10 kips over here at this end so what is the kind of uh, action this load is going to have on the cantilever beam yes you guessed it right this is going to have i can write an equivalent uh, system for this one where i can shift the 10 over here and if i have if i'm shifting the 10 from e to d in addition to that i have to apply a moment because that is what this is doing if you have a projection and if you're applying a 10 kilo, 10 kilo pounds load over here it is going to cause a turning effect on that beam overall so for this beam before we go ahead and solve the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram let us draw the equivalent system and also let us try to find the reactions that are there this is the equivalent system of the beam that we have and here as you can see that the points are still the same you have a c d b as you had in the original beam and at the point d i have simply shifted this load 10 kilo pounds to here and as a result of shifting this load from here to here i have also added a moment that is 10 times this 2 that is 20 over here so now i am boy i have boiled down the problem from whatever was given in the fear to a regular beam which we are used to seeing now for this particular beam i have already you know gone ahead and calculate the reaction so i will mark the reaction so you will have a vertical reaction and a moment at this particular point b so you can obtain that easily from equilibrium and the values that you will get are that at this particular point you will have a reaction rb which comes out as 34 kips and you are going to have a moment this is going to be a reaction moment mb which comes out as 318 kip feet so now for this system we know what is what are the loads and what are the reactions so we have all the tools in our hand to start drawing the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram right now again coming back to the same question we keep, we keep asking every time that what are the different sections where we are going to take well looking at the figure over here you can easily tell that we need to take a section where this uniformly distributed load is acting after that load ends that is between c and d then again from d to b so all these points on discontinuities or where you have the uniformly distributed loads you need to take the, those sections so let's maybe try to mark those sections so maybe the first section is over here somewhere that is section one another section i can take over here that is section two another one maybe here that is my section three right so for these three sections now i have to go and draw the free body diagrams and write the expressions for the v and the m right so let's go one by one let's first deal with uh, section one that is there so if I have to start with uh, section 1 
uh, in section one and uh, if I'm going from the left to the right so I'm going to draw start drawing from A over here so my X lies between A to C so I'm going from A to X to C so X lies between A to C over here right so for this one if I draw the the free body diagram how does that look like the free body diagram will be sorry let me mark the beam so the free body diagram will be something like this where this is my end A right I have a uniformly distributed load over here and here I am going to have my uh, convention for the positive moment V and this is positive shear V and this is my positive moment M and uh, this particular distance since I am measuring from here this is my X and this load as already given is 3 kips per feet it's a uniformly distributed load so per unit length so it is 3 kips per feet over here so from here if i write the expression for the shear force and the bending moment what do i get if you write it out you will get that your and i'm just going to write it and then you can easily solve and get from equilibrium as well you get v as equals to minus 3x and you get moment m as minus 3x squared by 2 so these are for the section at 1 now next in our line is this one the section at 2 over here so for the section at 2 let's go ahead and uh, you know do the same thing again we are going to go from you know left to right because uh, you might think that if you go from you know right to left to worry you will probably you know save solving a, a few things but it seems that it's simpler to go from a to all the way to this section too because the only thing you have to deal with is this load otherwise if you're going from right to left you have to deal with these reactions you have to deal with this point load this moment so too many things over here so for the section two as well i'm going to go from the left to the right half over here so let's just go ahead and draw the beam once again so again here is my point a here is my point c and then my section this is where my section is so from a to c i have the uniformly distributed load and that is acting right uh, and on the right hand side i am going to draw my positive shear v and positive moment m again remember the x i am taking is from here x and this particular distance from A to C where the uniformly distributed load is acting is given as eight is given as eight feet over here. So let's let's mark that one as well. So this is eight feet. So for this system, if you go ahead and if you again draw uh, do the equilibrium and then find the expressions for the V and the M what you will get that your v turns out as minus 24 flat out just a constant number and your moment m comes out as minus 24x plus 96 right so these two which we just wrote is for the section 2 is for this section over here now the last one in our list of sections is this section 3 now if you look at section 3 and if you are going from left to right you are probably going to have to deal with a more number of loads you have to deal with this UDL you have to deal with this point load and this point moment whereas if you are going from right to left you just have to deal with these two reactions the RB and the MB over here so for this it's probably wise to go from you know from B to this particular uh, to, to this direction from D to D here i forgot to write that this section 2 is essentially you are going from c to d over here so here it is going to be c to x to t right so the last section which we discussed section 3 if you are going from right to left so let's just write that out as well that for our section 3 what we get is i am going from b to d so b to x to d right so i am going to draw from my right from right to left over here so let's just draw that so 
so if uh, here i mark my uh, reaction so here this is my this is my uh, point b by the way this is my point b so if i mark my reactions i have this as uh, what i had found out this is 34 kips and i have a moment here as uh, 318 kip feet right and i don't have anything in between so i just have these end reactions and i don't have anything till i reach the point d so if i'm taking this section and since i have gone from right to left my positive convention for shear i'm trying to rotate the element clockwise so the convention for shear is going to be this is my v and my moment tries to bend the beam into a trough so i have an m so if i again write the expressions for the equilibrium what you will get from you know this one is that your v would come out as uh, minus 34 not dependent on x a constant number and your moment is going to come as 34 x minus 318 you can easily you know derive this from here as well so this what we derived is for section 3 now let's see so now for all the three sections so see, i i hope that you are slowly getting a hang of it you are you, you know chop these sections and each, in each of these sections you are finding the expressions for the shear force and the bending moment so for each of these sections now that we have the expressions now we can draw the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram so let us uh, go ahead and uh, mark our beam again so i'm going from a to p this i'm going to use for my shear force diagram and i'm going to use this for my bending moment diagram and let me draw the uh, the vertical lines as well just so that it's easy for me to keep a track of the different points of the different coordinates so this one is for c and this one is for d and the last one is my end support b these are just guidelines for me so that you know i know from where to where i'm going okay so first in our list i have the shear force diagram so let's see how the shear force varies so for this part one that we have over here in this part one my shear force has an expression of negative 3x now here you see again going back to intuition this is a free end of the cantilever beam and there is no applied concentrated load over here so the shear force must be zero as you see here as well it's a my negative 3x and it varies linearly from a to c so if it's zero over here when x equals to 3 that is at c it becomes equals to uh, sorry at at 8 feet so sorry c is at 8 feet over here so when at x equals to 8 feet that is when you are uh, reaching this point c over here it is going to be minus 3 times 8 that is 24 so let's maybe mark it here as well so at x equals to 8 feet that is at c oops i wrote that on top i will mark it again so here let me mark it here that at x equals to 8 feet i will have uh, v equals to minus 24 right so let's mark that one so i am starting from zero from this point over here i will go to a negative 24 somewhere you know along this line mark that right. so suppose this is the negative 24 i am not writing the negative sign why because i am already drawing in the lower half but i know it is negative in the end inside the boxes i put the positive and the negative sign and that is good enough okay so here i have a negative 24 now i am going to uh, my section 2 if you see section 2 i have a negative 24 to begin with and this also sort of tallies with what we have got over here from that first section because there is no you know uh, no sudden applied concentrated load so whatever you have and uh, you know landed up with you keep on continuing with that one and the whole from c to d you have a constant of minus 24 so you are going to have a single flat line over here Right. Uh, negative 24 you can do continuous constant then 
at the point d what happens at the point d you are having this you know downward load of 10 and if you see that at this particular section over here i have not calculated anything because here the v is independent of x so here i am at minus 24 but when you go to section 3 so just to the left of d right when you are still when you still haven't reached b so from c to d if you are going so just to the left of d you have a minus 24 and just to the right of d you have this section 3 and if you take a look at section 3 section 3 has a value of minus 34 and a constant value so 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 what what is actually going on here you have a minus 24 just to the left of c just to the left of d sorry and just to the right of d you have a my uh, just sorry uh, let me rephrase that just to the left of d you have a minus 24 and just to the right of d you have a minus 34 so there is a sudden jump and why is that jump happening you can tell that and this is how you slowly you know get to get, have a hang of things that here you having having an applied load of 10 so minus 24 and it will go down by another 10 as minus 34 so if you if that is difficult to follow that intuition if you simply you know see the numbers over here minus 24 and as you are going just to the right of d that becomes a minus 34 so here you will have a little jump and that is going to continue as a constant because here you see from b to d all across this entire thing it has a negative 34 and that also makes sense if you draw a constant negative 34 let me mark that first you see when you reach at the very right here you have that reaction rb again so right so which is which is equal and opposite in magnitude so you have thing like this over here so this is 34 negative 34 so this entire shear force diagram is negative right so there is in this in this kind for this loading and for this structure there is no place within the structure of a positive shear you have a negative shear over here okay so that takes care of my shear force diagram now let's take a look at the bending moment now before we go there let's again appreciate the shear force diagram especially this point over here i was just to the left of d i was minus 24 just to the right of d i have a minus 34 so there was a jump and the reason for that jump was that you have a point load a concentrated load over here now from the bending moment diagram even before we draw it can you sort of guess that where there would be a jump probably you guessed it right it will be at the same point again because here now i have a concentrated moment over here that is 20 keep feet so let's see whether we get that kind of a jump or not okay so again for the first section this is section one this is two and this is three over here for the first section i have already written here that it is a quadratic variation minus three x square over two again it's a free end so here the moment must be zero which is obvious if you put x equals to zero over here the moment is zero so let's see at c that is at eight over here the value of the moment if you put x equals to three sorry x equals to eight which is that point uh, c over here you will get a, a value of the moment as uh, negative 96 Right. so it's a quadratic variation and it will go to 96 so let's just you know draw that maybe something like this you get a 96 i have again drawing in the bottom half plane so that is negative over here okay all right so here i get a you know negative 96 over here now interestingly this quadratic part ends as long as i am reaching c now the moment i am crossing c i am from c to d here you see the moment variation is linear this is very interesting over here and since at this point c i do not have a point moment which is acting i should not expect a jump so as you see over here here if you put x equals to that where this c is right so if you put a value of you know x equals to 8 let's see what we get because here remember x is from here to here from here a to where you are taking this section so here if i put x equals to 8 that is at the point c let's see what we get so at x equals to 8 you will see m becomes the same thing it is minus 24 times 8 plus 96 and if you quickly calculate that 96 minus 24 times 8 you end up with a minus 96 which is what we expect which is this minus 96 over here so that is good but now the question is that from c to d how is the variation going to be from a to c over here so let me maybe uh, you know, put the names again so that i don't have to go back to the 
uh, original figure every time so a this is my uh, c this is my d and this is my b over here from a to c that was a quadratic variation but from c to d it's a linear variation although the starting point the starting value is the same but it's linearly varies from c to d so what is the what is the value at exactly the point d or maybe just to the left of d just before i have reached this point over here if i put the value now note that from a to d the distance is 11 feet over here so if i again go and here i put uh, at x equals to 11 if you put 11 it will be minus 24 times 11 plus, which is 96 and if you calculate that you will see that you will get a value of minus 168 so it goes from 96 to d it's a the the variation is linear it is not uh, quadratic anymore you have a linear variation so let's just mark that so it has a linear variation over here and it reaches this particular value which is 168 negative again right now 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 the question now we hypothesized that here that we should have a jump because you know there is a concentrated moment over there let's see if you get that or not now right just to the right of d all of this was happening just to the left of d because we are going from c to d so just to the right of d over here now when i just go to the right of d i am in section 3 for which the bending moment equation is this one over here now this expression in remember while deriving this one we were going from right to the left so x was x will be measured from b onward so let's just mark that i forgot to mark this earlier so x is going from here right so if i put the value of x if i'm going from here to d if i put the value of 3 plus 2 remember from b to d it is 3 plus 2 5 feet over here let's see what we get so here if i put at remember x in this case you are measuring from the right to the left because i have taken my section from the right to the left and i, I and i had appropriately marked my positive convention for the shear and the moment so it's natural that x when i take is goes from zero to this is d point d if i'm taking at point d it will be five three plus two equals to five right so at x equals to five that you take you will see you will get the value of the moment as 34 times 5 minus 318 if you calculate you will see that value will come out as minus 148 now what does that tell you that tells you that exactly at the point d or just to the right not exactly just to the right of the point d i have the value of minus 148 but from my section 2 just to the left of d i have a value of minus 168 so there has been a jump so it was 168 now it has become a negative 148 so maybe let me indicate that jump over here so this value over here is uh, 148 now is this jump so the jump occurs as we can see now is this jump somehow related to the concentrated moment yes you see what's the difference between 168 and 148 it's 20 what is the concentrated moment here that is also 20 so it's all linked all of them are sort of tied together in this nice bending moment diagram that you have right so now here you have a 148 and now remember at this point b over here i have a moment of 318 right so in that particular case what am i going to have here if i put a value of x equals to 0 right so because again i'm going from right to the left so if i put a value of x equals to 0 i'm going to have a minus 318 over here so that is even further below so maybe i just scroll it and maybe mark it somewhere over here so that is minus you know 318 someone over here and how is the variation from here to here well the variation is linear it, as you see it is just linearly dependent on x that is there so the variation is linear so let's just draw that one as well from 318 to the negative 140 that we have over here right and if you if you take a look here the value of this moment that you get it checks out with the reaction that you get here as well so my final task is to join this one right so here you get your overall bending moment diagram now a couple of things to note uh, so in this case what we got 
that your this particular line is quadratic and this is linear and this is also linear it's a good example problem where you see that while taking the sections at the different points and also here you have a you know discontinuity in the load as well as a discontinuity in the moment and we saw that how that played out in your you know shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram later we will use the relationships between the shear force bending moment and the load which will which will come to in a bit and then you will see that you know there is another way to derive this this similar bending moment and the shear force diagram.